in a continuing litany of allegations of sexual misconduct against St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Ralph Gonzales comes a new development. Colin Williams, Director of Public Prosecutions, has dismissed another charge of sexual assault against the PM. This decision was met with confusion, even outrage by women, human rights activists, and legal observers throughout the Caribbean. Women's rights advocates have described this latest decision as appalling. With me now is Margaret Parsons, one of the victims of Prime Minister Gonzales' alleged assault, and it was Ms. Parsons' case that the DPP has dismissed. I'm Spiria Farron Henry. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you for being here, Ms. Parsons. Thank you for having me, Ms. Henry. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Margaret Parsons? Well, uh, I'm a human rights lawyer. I live in Toronto. I'm originally from the Caribbean. Uh, uh, very actively involved in my community, as well as um, on human rights issues, not just domestically, but internationally as well. Okay, and how is it that you came to, to know uh, Prime Minister Gonzalez? I was introduced to him by my family's lawyer, uh, Mr. Samuel Comijong. For Christmas, I was in St. Vincent because my parents are originally from there. So I was, uh, they were embarking on uh, revisions of, uh, or reviewing their constitution. I thought it would have been a very good idea to try to entrench human rights, the protection of women um, and other vulnerable groups into the similar to our Charter of Rights and Freedom in, here in Canada. Okay, what, it, what do you know about the Prime Minister? Anything at all? At that time, no, I didn't know anything about him. Uh, I didn't know what his political views were. I didn't know what... Uh, I didn't know his age. I didn't know, you know, barely knew what he looked like. I'd never met him. I knew absolutely nothing. So I went in to meet him uh, on a very clean slate, mm -hmm. um, being very objective, hoping. Also, the, the one thing I did know was that he was a lawyer. So, Ms. Parsons, tell us how the exchange was with the Prime Minister. How was it when you first met him? It was a very, very disturbing experience. I went in there, as I said, hoping that I would be having a discussion with a Prime Minister, a man of his stature, uh, thinking I would be having an exchange uh, with a, uh, another lawyer, another professional. Um, and before I knew it, I was being sexually assaulted um, by Prime Minister Gonzales. Uh, I was very, very taken aback, very, very shocked uh, by his behavior, uh, his undignified behavior for a man of his profession, but also in the, in the office that he was holding, a very high-ranking office in his country, um, that he would behave in, in such a way. So, Margaret, can you describe in detail exactly what happened that day with the Prime Minister. Sure. After sitting in his office, uh, in the reception area of his office, um, I was um, invited in. Uh, I sat down. He was behind his desk and I sat in front of his desk. He took a few phone calls, I think one from his wife um, and one from um, colleagues, friends, I don't know who they were. So we started talking, I started uh, expressing my idea uh, about the promotion of human rights uh, in, in the country. Then he came around the desk and he held my hand and uh, sort of gesturing to stand up. So I thought, because there was a long sort of boardroom table near uh, the window, so I thought maybe we're going over and it would have been more, he felt more suitable to have the discussion at that table. Um, and it was at that point he started to grab at my breast and tried to kiss me. And I said, Mr. Prime Minister, can you please stop? Um, he then started to say, you know, oh, you women are so irresistible, you're so, you know, beautiful. Um, um, and I said, I'm not here for any of this, please stop. I asked him repeatedly to stop. He then went on to say, you know, oh, don't resist, you'll enjoy it. Um, and at that point, I had to push him away very hard and run out of his office. It's so difficult to understand how you're first meeting someone and they they're attacking you. I'm sure for you, you still question that to this day. Um, how, how did it come to pass? Like, were, was there anyone around? Um, did he just walk into the room and see you? And then, like, I, I don't understand. I didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. I was so shocked um, uh, at, at his behavior. Um, so I can't even begin to fathom what could have triggered. Uh, I, I know just looking at him, um, and further to that, what I've heard, um, that he is a sexual predator, that he is, um, he, I think he has illness that he needs to address. Uh, he's in complete denial. 
Was there any, did, did he, I have to ask, did he actually go further as in like ripping your clothes or physically bruising you or leaving you with any physical scars? There were no physical scars. He kept trying to put his hand down my dress, uh, the top of my dress, and kept grabbing, you know, at, at, uh, at, at, at my bosom. Um, and I kept, it, you know, so there was a bit of a struggle because I wasn't going to stand by idly and watch this man, um, you know, treat me in this very undignified way uh, and, and trample over my dignity, one as a human being, but more so as a woman. And it's your claim that he assaulted you sexually? Absolutely. I did nothing to provoke or um, uh, it in any way. Uh, in fact, I remember um, the, how I was dressed. I was wearing a long dress. Um, it wasn't low cut or anything like that. I, it wasn't revealing in any way. So um, I, I didn't do it because I went dressed professionally, um, thinking I was having a meeting with a professional and someone who respected his office. Uh, so uh, I, I don't think, regardless of how I was dressed, even if I was wearing a nun's garb, yeah. um, that I think that uh, the kind of man that he is, having a, a woman behind closed doors in his office, that he would have uh, behaved that way. I think that that is just his modus operandi, that is just the way he conducts himself in this very undignified, uncivilized way, uh, and um, regardless of how I was dressed. Uh, but I wasn't dressed in any way provocative, or it suggested I went in there to have a plain and simple discussion about promoting human rights in St. Vincent and throughout the Caribbean. So, Margaret, is there any way that you could have mistaken this? Could you have misinterpreted what he was trying to do or say to you? Absolutely not. Um, even today, when I still think about it, I get angry, I get uh, enraged. Um, and, and the feelings of fear, of confusion, of frustration, um, they still emerge. I, I think women know when their um, beings or when their bodies are being attacked, when there is a, a threat. And I am absolutely not mistaken. In fact, I've never encountered anything like this as a woman before. So I am absolutely not mistaken in terms of, and, and it, wasn't, it wasn't even subtle. His behavior was straight out, it was an attack on me. And so he, he wasn't in any way subtle. Um, and, and I don't think that he probably even knows how to be subtle. But regardless, no, I was, I'm not mistaking any cues, mistaking his intention. Um, um, he attacked me, he sexually assaulted me in his office. Uh, from what I understand and from further discussions that this is something he's known for, he's known throughout the island, throughout the region as a matter of fact, for doing. And the fact that there are women who have independently come forward means that something is amiss here. Um, but in terms of that day, I am very clear, absolutely clear, 100% clear that he attacked me in his office and sexually assaulted me. And had I not gotten out of there, had I not gotten out of there, I risked being raped by Ralph Gonzalez. How did you get out of there? Did you have to fight him off physically? How did you get out and were there any witnesses? No, because we were, we, there were no witnesses. The, the door was shut. Um, so it was intended to be a, a, a private meeting, which I, I thought it would have been. Um, and had he had one of his aides or advisors, that would have been fine as well. Um, but it was just the two of us. Um, how I got out of there, well, as you could see, I'm a big woman, and this was one time that my size was to my advantage, where I was able to fend him off and push him away very, very hard. W whether he fell, whether he hit, his, hit himself on the, the desk, I don't know. My major and first concern was my safety and getting away from the clutches of Ralph Gonzalez and getting as far away from him as possible. What do you say to those who say, this is a case of men being men. You wore something provocative or you're, you're a beautiful woman. What do you say to those people? That doesn't give anybody the right at all. It doesn't give a man the right to attack, abuse uh, uh, your, your, your body, your being. Um, you know, no means no. And in fact, I told him to stop. So Margaret, how are you doing? How have you been since? How have you made it to today? Well, I think about it often, and um, I think about it on a number of levels. Um, one, what could have happened to me um, had I not, by the grace of God, 
gotten out of that office and away from uh, that sexual predator named Ralph Gonzalez. Um, I, I still get emotional. I still feel every time I, th I think about it, talk about it, all those emotions, uh, the anger, the frustration, the confusion, particularly the fear. Um, and I, I also think about it on the level of the women and girls of that country, um, that the fact that they are vulnerable to this man, that he is the head of state, that he has a lot of power as being the head of state, um, and how he chooses to use and leverage that power against women and girls in the country, that I'm very fearful for them, that while he is prime minister, they are not safe, and he needs to get help. So, but I think about it, I've, I will never forget it. I will never forget it because it was um, so real, it was so um, uh, damaging, it was so emotional, um, and, uh, and I have to deal with it constantly, all the time. What gave you the courage to come forward? One of the, the reasons why I came forward, and, and I, you know, I did mention it and talked about it to a number of to people afterwards, but there was a woman who was on Ralph Gonzales' security detail a number of years after that had accused him of raping her. And I was very concerned because no one in the country was believing her, that she didn't have a lot of support, that she was being ridiculed. And I thought it was very important that somebody else say, no, he is capable of this, that this allegation needs to be investigated. So I was um, talking again to Mr. Kamijang, our family lawyer, and I mentioned it to him. And I said, you know, you remember what I told you he did to me in his office? And he said, yes, I do. And I thought about it when this woman came forward. And he introduced me to Kay Bacchus, who was the lawyer, one of the lawyers representing the victim. And I thought that I had to stand with her. I had to come forward. Even if I were to say he, he attempted or he, he attempted to rape me or tried to do this to me in his office and to tell my story. So this woman, the fact that she had the courage to come forward gave me the courage as well to come forward because a lot of victims of sexual harassment, sexual abuse, sexual assault and rape, they suffer in silence because they feel that they wouldn't be believed. They feel that no one will take them seriously. Uh, and so I really felt that I needed to stand up in support of her and to let her know that she wasn't alone, she was not the only victim, and that at least there were other people that believed her. Margaret, how has it been for you since? What are the, the lasting repercussions of an experience like this? You can never forget an experience like this. It lives with you forever, and it will live with me forever. Um, because I felt so vulnerable, I was uh, um, the way in which I felt violated. This sort of violation can never go away. Uh, it helped me to understand um, people who have complained about sexual harassment, sexual assault, sexual abuse. Um, and so I, I really, um, you know, uh, because I have experienced it. Um, but it, it has its lasting impact. The, the, when, you, when I think about it, and I, think, I, I continue to think about it to this day, um, uh, the anger, the fear, first of all, the fear just comes back immediately. Um, the anger, uh, um, the, the, the frustration that someone wouldn't take no for an answer and that when, when you said stop, wouldn't stop. Um, and, and, and the absolute confusion that somebody in this office wouldn't respect his office, wouldn't respect himself, and wouldn't respect a woman um, in that way. Um, and so I just wonder at times about how vulnerable the women and girls of St. Vincent and the Grenadines are with somebody in office, somebody who holds this high-ranking office. But I think about it, I think about it often, uh, and when I do, um, the emotion comes back. Uh, the, the way I felt that day, it is very raw. It is at the surface. It's as if it happened yesterday. Um, and I think I will feel this way 